You start Starry Messenger with a uh, dedicated to the memory of Cyril deGrasse Tyson, your father, and to all others who want to see the world as it could be, rather than is as it is. I was wondering, you know, your, your dad was a very big figure in sociology and civil rights movements, and what were some of the lessons that you took from your dad that were extrapolated into your journey to getting to know the cosmos and also sharing your insights with people like me and with the world? Yeah, thanks for that question. So he was um, he was active mostly behind the scenes in the civil rights movement. No, he wasn't leading protests. He wasn't he wasn't in that category of person, which was a very important category over that era. He was making things happen uh, administratively, uh, legislatively, um, and he. So some few things I learned. It's possible to be um, angry, because that's a natural emotion, but not bitter. Mm. Okay? So when it's when he showed us pictures from that era, I grew up in the 1960s and 70s, because that's how old I am, The and you see sort of vicious racism unfolding in front of you. He would be quick to tell us, those people don't know any different. That's how they were trained, mm. by their parents and by their friends. So in a sense, it was not their fault that we need to be more open to inviting them to a conversation about all of this. And that's hard to do when you're angry. Because when you're angry, you just want to fight back. And by the way, an entire branch of the civil rights movement was prepared to do just that. Uh, leading that list were, for example, the Black Panthers. No, we're not going to tolerate this. And we're going to fight back. We're not going to turn the other cheek, as Martin Luther King had recommended. So there were different sort of camps operating within that movement. My father was in the camp where you, you want to work with these people and not shun them mm. because ultimately we're both going to inhabit the same earth. And another important bit of advice was it's not good enough to be right. You also have to be effective. So you can say I'm right and you're wrong and there it is. And you might feel good about it making that declaration. But if you haven't convinced the person you're talking to, <laughs> then go home. What, what, what did you accomplish other than making yourself feel good and self-righteous over someone else who maybe hasn't thought about it as deeply as you have? Do, do you want to lord it over them that you are in the right and they're in the wrong? Mm. Or do you want to be effective and somehow change views? So that was another, uh, if I were to sort of distill a lot of his wisdom, it would come down to that, both of those, actually. That's amazing and the the fact that he chose to to build the bridge rather than burn it it speaks a ton on the heart oh, by the way i'm his kid the astrophysicist right so so he's his both of his feet are in the trenches in an era meanwhile i'm looking up in the universe so what i can tell you is all that was going on in the backdrop of my life which kept me anchored yeah. in whatever else I was doing um, with the rest of the universe. And so that was an important reality check for me, that no matter what I'm doing in the sky, there's stuff happening on Earth that still deserves my attention. Absolutely. And you articulate those two, you connect those two in Stereo Messenger in a great way, because even though we're, you're taking us into a journey of seeing the Earth from above, You're talking about the issues that we're facing today. And I, I'd like to get on that later on. 